And welcome into the ballpark. Happy to have you with us. We've got baseball on the show. It's the New York Mets going up against the Pittsburgh Pirates. First pitch coming at you right after the break. All right, just about ready for baseball. Getting the nod on the mound, J.T. Brubaker. What do you have on him, Singy? Well, he got into the eighth inning his last time out, really pitching deep in the games as of late. We'll see today how many innings he's got in him. Ready to go? Ready to go. And stepping in for New York, Brandon Nimmo. Number nine, Brandon Nimmo. The pitch. Oh, and the zone doesn't get the call. And we're underway. Man, first pitch of the day, and the zone's already tight. Swing and a miss. And the count one and one. Back to the mound. Throw on to Santana. One up, one down. Second. Here's a Mets lineup now. And a big factor for them in recent games, Brandon Nimmo. Well, Boog, he's a guy to watch because he capitalizes on the big situations as well as anyone. Hitting over 350 with runners in scoring position. And you know what that means? That means he's a key player for this offense because he can really drive them in when the team needs him the most. He's been clutch all year. Starling Marte batting with one down takes a strike. One down, base is empty. Whoa. Ground ball left side, and that's just foul. Here's a one two. That one missing inside. And another ball. And the right hander deals. And that one is lifted in the air. McCutcheon after it. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there's two down. Batting third. The second base. Jeff McNeil stands yeah, in. Yeah. Obviously McNeil. a guy who makes good contact, hits for average. But one of the things in today's game, the value in the fact that he hits both righties and lefties. And the first pitch misses for ball one. They're so reliant on the matchups nowadays, Chris, and it's huge when you don't have to sit a guy or platoon him. When you can hit you know, both sides in terms of pitcher's arms, you're a guy that it's hard to take out of the lineup, and I think it's very important today when everything is under the microscope. The next pitch misses, and it's 3-0. Right-hander kicks, deals, and he walked him. Four pitches. That's an easy walk, man. He could have walked me right there, Boog. The last one wasn't even close. So two down. Here's Pete Alonso. Swing and a miss. Strike one. McNeil off of first with two away. Ground ball to the right side. He'll do it himself. And that is the third out of the inning. Mets leave one. And now the Pirates will get their first opportunity. No score. You're dialed into the show. Back here at the ballpark. And pitching here today, Justin Verlander. And as usual with him, Singy, I think we can expect plenty of strikeouts. Yeah, Boogie's racked up over 3,000 strikeouts in his career, so expect to see more of the same in this one. We go to the bottom of the first. 
at the plate for Pittsburgh, Key Brian Hayes. Chris, when you look at Justin Verlander, what makes him so good on the mound? Well, I would say in the prime of his career, the fact that as the game went on and he got deeper into his outing, he actually gained more velocity and became more crisp. So he was one of those classic pitchers that you said, if we don't get him early, we're not going to get him at all. And now it's even up. A strike. I mean, that's perfect location right on the black. I mean, over and over again, this guy demonstrates the ability to hit those spots. They're so tough to do anything with as a hitter. Kicks and deals. Oh, that's out. The guy at the plate could recognize slider out of the hand. Didn't stay in the tunnel very long in terms of depth and perception. He knew right away it was an off-speed pitch. And a foul ball. He stays alive. And he deals. Got him looking. Called strike three and a fastball up in the zone. Frustrating end to the at bat for the hitter, and I'm sure that's going to sit on him for a little while. You want to be ready to hit the fastball. Sometimes you can overthink things, and I think that was the case right there. Connor Joe, now in the box, comes up empty with a swing there. Pitch misses. One ball, one strike. And here it comes. Swing and a ball lifted left field. Canna pulls it down. And there's two away. Batting third, the center fielder, Brian. Brian Reynolds here. And the pitch is outside, ball one. Righty to the plate. That's in for a strike. It's even up. It's a good take. Lace to right center base hit. So a two out knock keeps the inning alive. Everything came together Not for him. Anymore. And man, I'll tell you, That's a line drive job. like that into the oh, gap yeah. just feels so good. It's Ooh. feedback that you had everything on time and in control from start to finish with your swing. Here's O'Neill Cruz. Swing and a high fly ball to left. Canna moving under this one. And that is that. So one left for Pittsburgh. Scoreless after one. And welcome back. New Getting inning getting back. started. Now up to hit Francisco Lindor. Lindor. The pitch. And ball one. Next offering is in for a strike. Patrick Johnson behind the plate. Patty Johnson to some book, but I'd ask permission first before I called him that. Does a pretty good job back there. Occasionally, we'll see a couple of sideways looks from players, but that kind of comes with the territory, right? On the ground, Castro whips it to first. One out in the second. What about an umpire's height? How much of a role does that play in your experience and what the strike zone is like? 
Maybe. Yeah, I think it pushes the strike zone up a little bit, which, you know, as a former hitter, you like that. You wanted the ball up. You didn't want to have to deal with stuff down in the zone consistently. That's to third. Hayes to first. Oh. And that quickly, two away. Good sinker low in the zone right there and produced exactly what he was looking for. Ball on the ground, nice ground out. Here's Mark Canna. This lineup's going to have to find a way to make him work a little harder out there on the mound. I mean, he is just mowing him down. He's settling in. You've got to make him uncomfortable. Maybe step out of the box, call timeout, do whatever it takes. And he's down 0-2 as he swings through it. Well, you got the hitter already chasing that nasty slider. If you're on the mound, you just want to expand the zone right now. Get a swing and miss and get through this at bat. And there's a rocket into the outfield. Good job of just putting the ball in play with two strikes. Showed a willingness to drive that pitch the opposite way. Didn't get jumpy, didn't try to pull the ball. He let it get deep, took the barrel right to it, and then extended through the swing for the line drive base hit. Here's Daniel Vogel back. There's a strike. That's a strike across the top of the zone. Way inside, gets out of the way. The one, two. On the ground to the left. And it gets by him. Omar Narvaez at the plate. Two for four in the game last night. First pitch doesn't find the zone. They say it went. Got him swinging. A lot of adrenaline, we can see it right there. And sometimes you just got to let it out. That's an outstanding job of taking that, executing, and getting out of a tough inning. Back here at PNC Park, and now Jack Sawinski. You talk about the power and the speed together. Well, we knew he was going to be a stud just coming up making his way through the minor leagues and quickly at this level an impact player pulls that one foul the pitch fought off foul the 0 2 gets a piece and stays alive. Next pitch ball. inside, inside, and that's ball one. That one lifted to left. Makes the catch for the out. That the second now base. it's the second baseman, Rodolfo Castro. Two homers in the game yesterday, so he's feeling good coming in. And there's a strike. All one's the count. No score here in the second. Towards first. 
Alonso takes it to the bag. Already two out here in the home half of inning number two. Here's Andrew McCutcheon to hit. An important bat for him right here. One hit shy of 2,000 for his career. And that is in for a strike. 1-1. Oh, Two outs. Swing and a ground ball out to short. Sneaks through. Base hit. Joey gets on base and keeps it going. So a big milestone reached right there. His 2,000th career hit. Well, this is not something to take lightly at all. 2,000 hits is an extremely difficult number to reach, and it's a testament to how good he's been for his entire career. So consistent with his approach to hitting, and he's not done yet. He's certainly got more knocks in him. Here's the Pirates catcher now, Henry Davis. Squirts away a little bit, but no advance. That's ball one. McCutcheon leads off first with two down to the inning. So two balls and no strikes. Chris, with that distraction and a speedy guy at first, He's in a favorable hitter's count. Well, if nothing else, I mean, this is a great spot for a hitter to be in. The pitch. Strike two. Do that fastball right by him, slightly elevated. That's a confidence boost for this guy out there on the mound. See if he continues to climb the ladder. Carlos Santana. Next to bat for the Bucks. 3-2, two, two out, runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitter's got to stay. And down on strikes. That is the inning. Pirates leave one. We'll move to the third with no score. Top half of the third inning. Here's Brandon Nimmo. Nimmo hitting leadoff in today's game. And he's been on a good run at the plate, hitting over 325 in his last 10 games. And he grounds one to the right side. Throw on to Santana. Leadoff hitter gone in the third. The right fielder, number six, Starling Marte. Here's Starling Marte. Flied out his first time. Marte, a member of the 1,000 hit club, and he was selected to the All Star game last year. First offering misses the mark. Here comes a pitch. That one missed. Top of the third, no score. Next pitch is outside. Pretty easy to give up on that pitch right there. Started on the edge of the plate with the spin. You know it's going to finish well off the plate. And there's ball four. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. The batter, Hitter one. didn't offer at it. Second now he has somebody to worry about yeah. over at first. McNeil. And now here's Jeff McNeil. He reached out a walk his first time. One Pitch up. out, but no action. The 1 0. Marte of the move. Pitch is low. Safe at second with a stolen base. Well, a nice lead and a nice steal there to get into scoring position with the heart of the order at the plate. That might just lead them to pitching around these hitters a little more because of the open base, but it's early in this ballgame. Can't imagine it'll change the attack plan too much. And the pitch. One out and a runner at second. And a foul ball.
Popped up to the left. Into foul ground. Davis takes it in for the out. Two away. That was a good, hard fastball with some nice ride up in the zone right there. Hitter looked like he was on it, but I think that velocity at the end just beat him. Instead of a line drive or something hit deep, it's a pop-up and an easy out for the defense. And now it's the polar bear, Pete Alonzo. Good eye right there. Man on second, two down. Just missed. He's clearly trying to work him away here. Both pitches off the plate. If you really want to put the ball in play, you're going to have to stay back and drive it to the opposite field. Next pitch is downstairs. Good pitchers make pitches in big situations. And right here with a middle-of-the-order hitter up, runner in scoring position, he's got to find a way to throw a quality strike. And that's ball four. I don't think you really wanted to pitch to him right there anyhow. So two on with two away. And next for the Mets, Francisco Lindor grounded out his first time. And that's in for a strike. First and second, two down. Line drive, that's a base hit. Marte is waved home. Reynolds fires it to the plate. On the board first, it's one zip. Big swing of the bat right there to give him the lead. That was clutch. Everything was on time and fluid in that swing. Got a pitch he could get the barrel on and lined it into center for the knock. Those always feel good. So up next for New York, Brett Beatty. Grounded out his first time up. Swings and misses. That's strike one. Left hand batter waits. Just a slow ground ball this time. Cruz whips it to first on the run. Hey, to first, and he beats it. Everyone's safe. Tough play on a nice forehand stop. Had to be perfect right there with the exchange and throw to get the out, but looked like he had to dig into the glove a little bit more to get a good grip. Close play, but that little extra time on the transfer made all the difference. Two outs, bases full. And stepping in for New York, Mark Canna. Slow roller to third. They limit the damage here. But they pick up one run on the RBI single. It's now 1-0. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Back here in Pittsburgh, set for the bottom of the third. And now the first baseman, Carlos Santana. The right-hander back to work. And that one is lifted in the air. Nimmo has it sized up. And out number one on the grab. Now batting. The third base now base. batting Key Brian Hayes. He was a strikeout victim his first time. And that one fouled off. And he'll one. Swings through that. Hayes tries to hold up, appeal to first, and that's ruled a swing. It's a strikeout. Connor Joe will hit next. 0 for 1 with a flyout. That one ripped. To the warning track, makes the catch. Down in order, go the Pirates. They're down, one nothing. As we go to the top of the fourth. So now, here's the Mets DH. Daniel Vogelback. Vogelback. Brubaker, back to work. 
Sharp grounder. That's through for a base hit. Well, clearly he was ready to hit right there. Just kept it simple. Played Pepper with the middle of the infield and took it back where it came from. And there was just no one there to knock it down. Omar Narvaez now at the plate. That hits the dirt, and it's 1-0. Well, That's these Mets showing great discipline at the plate, and patience definitely seems to be the name of their game in this one. They've worked three walks already, so that proves they're not anxious up there. They're sticking to their game plan, and it's working. Next pitch misses way outside. Yeah. Vogel back on at first nobody out off the plate inside and that's ball three. The 3 2 is off the outside edge, and that is ball four. He just hasn't had great command of his pitches in this one. Definitely more walks than you'd like to see. Here's the center fielder, Brandon Nimmo. He's been such a good hitter with runners in scoring position. Some guys just take it to another level. For him right now at the plate, it's like everyone else is in slow motion, and he's in full speed. And takes low for ball one. First and second here, no outs. And there's a foul ball. Ball to strike, the pitch. And that misses off the outside edge. Good spot for the hitter. Definitely has the advantage in this count with runners on. Look for him to be aggressive on this next pitch. That misses the zone, and the count is three and one. Well, these guys have had a hard time scoring in this one. The guy out there on the mound wants to keep attacking, make sure that they don't get any confidence. And the righty deals. And that's ripped for a base hit. They won't test it here. Base is loaded, no outs. Well, when you fall behind in the count, you've got to come into the zone, and then guys have a better chance of hitting the ball hard like you did right there. Starling Marte up to here. And Boog, I'd say he's due. And he swings and misses at the initial offering. Kicks and fires. Good eye right there. Bullpen action for the Pirates. Johan Oviedo up and loosening in the pen. Here's a 1-1. Swings through that one for strike two. Next offering is outside. That's a really good take. Spoils the two strike pitch and he'll see another. On the ground the first and it stays fair. And now the runner will score from third on the wild throw. Now the second run is in, and they're up by three. A perfect example right there. That plate discipline, it pays off. The deeper he gets yeah. into a count, the more comfortable he becomes, and he usually wins the battle. Derek Shelton out of the dugout, and he will make the move. JT Brubaker out of the game, and as he heads for the dugout, we'll take a quick break. New arm on the mound when we get back.
Here's a new pitcher from the pen, Johan Oviedo. And compared to a lot of other relievers, strikeouts have not been a big weapon for him this year, so the defense should be active. So runners at the corners, nobody out. Here's the second baseman, Jeff McNeil. And that's in there for strike one. Left hand hitter waits. Marte of the move. Pitch almost got him. Safe at second, and that was not close. Not only are these guys applying some pressure on the defense, it looks like they're trying to have a big inning with that steal of second. Now two guys in scoring position. This could be the start to a nice rally. The 1-1. One, one. And another ball. It's a big opportunity right here, but I love the way he's slowing the game down. He's shrinking his zone, making sure he gets the pitch that he wants to hit. Righty delivers. Left field. Sawinski squeezes it. Runner tags for home. Throw home. He beats it. And it's 4 nothing. Well, that's a quality at bat right there. You know the situation. You need something in the air and deep enough, and that's exactly what he did. Good pass to the baseball. Pete Alonzo up now for the Mets. First pitch just misses. Still only one out here in the inning. That one misses. Now 2 0. Oh. And a pitch. And it is 2 and 1. Wow, no fair right there. I mean. That slider didn't move to the very last moment. Incredibly difficult to pick that up. Just kind of have to tip your cap on that pitch. Misses outside, and that's ball three. And he gets that fastball by him upstairs. Love to see it. Power versus power right there. The 3 2 is off the outside edge, and that is ball four. They just keep handing out gifts, Boo. Were we supposed well, to bring something? See, I up. think just our Let's presence go. is the present. And now it's Frankie Lindor. RBI knock for him last time. Now a chance to drive in another run. There's a swing and a drive. Gone! Francisco Lindor sends it out, and they add to their lead. It's seven nothing. A breaking ball on the inside part of the play requires a hitter to stay really square with his mechanics. If you fly open with the front shoulder, there's no way you keep that ball fair. An outstanding job mechanically. He deserves that home run. And now Brett Beatty going one. Late swing foul to the left. The wide to kick the pitch. Gets under it and pops it up. Cruz takes it in for the out. And there's two down. Now batting the left fielder, Mark Hanna. Now the left fielder, Mark Canna. In there and it's 0-1. 
All ones the count. The wind and the pitch. That's in there. That is strike two. Dangerous spot for that slider right there. Didn't seem to quite finish out front and get that sharp break. Tell you what, he doesn't want to throw that pitch again. Oh. Going to count one and two. This one popped up. Hayes should have this one. Makes the grab, and that's the inning. Another look at the long ball from Francisco Lindor. It's now 7 0. Back here at the ballpark, ready to go for the last half of the inning. At the plate for Pittsburgh, Brian Reynolds. Well, every pitcher wants to run support, and having a lead is nice, but it can be challenging for some guys. I think keeping the mindset to attack instead of trying to be too fine and have too much finesse, go after hitters and get quick outs. Pitch is in for a strike. It's 0-1. This is one of those times when you want to be aggressive. Go ahead and pitch to contact. Let the defense work behind you. You've got a nice, comfortable lead. Don't try to be too fine. Hammered down the right side, but foul. The wind of the pitch. Hard hit, left side. Slings it across. Leadoff hitter retired in the fourth. Now batting, shortstop. Oh, yeah. Cruz. Next, it's the Pirates cleanup hitter, O'Neill Cruz. Fly to left his first time up. In there for strike one. Puts it in the air out towards left center. Nimmo flashes the leather on the run and catch. Now batting, left fielder, Jack. Jack Sawinski, the next pirate to hit. Hit it well, but flied out to the deepest part of the outfield his first time. That hits the dirt, and that is ball one. Instead of letting the hitter get his arms extended, tied him up a little bit, slightly up, slightly in. One, two now. Fouls that off to the left, and we'll do it again. Next offering upstairs. And delivers outside. And the pitch. Keeps the at-bat going with a foul ball. Three. And down on strikes he goes. And good work there as he gets a 1-2-3. Bucks go down quietly. They continue to trail 7-0. Welcome back. Top five, leading John Shelby with Chris Singleton. And leading it off, Daniel, Daniel Vogelback. Vogelback. And he deals. There's a strike. Well, these Mets putting together some really good at-bats in this game. There's been a lot to like with how they're approaching their chances at the plate. It looked to me like they really wanted to get to the starter early. It's in and out of his glove. Now batting, catcher, Omar Narvaez. Man at first. Omar Narvaez up now for the Mets. In the air, center field. Reynolds gets under it. He makes the grab. One down. Now batting the center fielder, Brandon Nimmo. So the lineup flips over. Here's the Mets' leadoff man, Brandon Nimmo. It's 
swings and misses. Strike one. Man, he really sells the changeup with that arm action. Here's your one. Whoa. Ball, one strike. Vogelback leads off first with one away. Ball Next one miss. misses two and one. And a swing and a miss there. Two now. Swing and a ball popped up. Cruz heads towards it. That one gets down for a hit. Throws to second. They take the force out. Fine play in the hole for the out. Wow, this is one of those plays that happens sometimes, but it never really should. It seems like he just got a bad read on the ball, and the good throw from the outfield was perfect to get the out. Next to hit, Starling Marte. Now a screamer into the outfield. Reynolds brings it in for the third out. Mets strand one, but they're still in control. It's seven nothing. And welcome back. We head to the bottom of the fifth. And now it's the switch hitting second baseman, Rodolfo Castro. The wind of the pitch. Strike one. You know, these Pirates, as this game goes on, have to be more disciplined at the plate. Chasing pitches has been a big part of the story. We've seen it quite a bit today. It's been tough for them to make contact at times, and it just doesn't look like they're seeing it very well as a group. Next offering is foul back. And on the mound, you know confidence has to be pretty high with all of the swings and misses. Whoa, He's had him right eaten out of the palm of his hand pretty much all game. Fights it off, you'll see another. The next offering misses. Two and two. Just missed with a good breaking ball in. Looking for that hitter to chase and perhaps get some weak contact or a swing and miss. Good job on both sides. Swings and misses. Struck him out. He came out of his mechanics there. Typically Up likes to shoot the ball the other way. The right but that time, a little anxious. And now it's Andrew McCutcheon. One for one. He singled the left his first time through. Swing and a foul straight back. That pitch in for a strike. And the count is 0-2. Right side, Alonso takes it himself. Old man for the fifth inning, moving along two out. quick Pitcher. outs. Good slider inside right there. Batter fighting to get there, just rolled over it, got the ground ball. And now the catcher comes up to him. Henry Davis, his first at bat was a strikeout. Well, on the mound, very efficient, able to produce an outcome, it seems like, within the third or fourth pitch of just about every at bat. That one's in there, and that is strike one. All ones the count. Hit hard, that gets through. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. Got the top of the ball a little bit, but not much. That was hit pretty hard through the infield, so I think he'll be happy with that swing. Definitely generated some good bat speed. And now it's the switch hitter, Carlos Santana. And a strike in there. Man, this guy's got a great feel for his breaking ball today. And strike two. No ball, two strikes. In the dirt. 
that's a wild pitch as he moves into scoring position. That nope. misses the zone. Two balls, two strikes to count with two outs. Next offering is fouled back. Runner at second, two down. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. That ends the frame. So one left for Pittsburgh, not going their way. It's 7 nothing. Top of the sixth inning. Lead now it's the second man. baseman, Jeff the second McNeil. Baseman, Jeff McNeil in his fifth season, a career batting average over 300, and he's a former Silver Slugger recipient in the National League. And there's a ball. Swing and a miss. One and, one. and now it's even one and one. Right handed reliever. They say it went. One ball, two strikes. Next offering down low and in the dirt. And now it's filled up. Caught a break right there. Pretty good pitch on the outside corner. Stays alive. Tries to check his swing. Now a look to third. And he held up. Second walk of the game for him, and he's been really patient at the play, a game plan that he's sticking to. He's just not going outside of what he's looking for up there. Man at first, Pete Alonzo up now for the Mets. Hit pretty well in the air out to center. Reynolds makes the grab, and there's one down. The bat, the shortstop, Francisco Lindor. Francisco Lindor comes up to the plate. He's already homered here in this one. Lindor, a former All-Star, 29 years old, and he was born in Puerto Rico. And that's outside. Puerto Rico doesn't just produce baseball talent. It produces Hall of Fame talent from Roberto Clemente to Pudge Rodriguez. Right-hander kicks deals. And a foul ball. McNeil, the base runner at first with one out. This one in the air center field. Reynolds gets under it and puts the squeeze on it. That's out number two. As good as he's seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand, you cannot hang a breaking ball right there. Lucky it stayed in the ballpark. Beatty goes six feet, three inches, 210 pounds, and he's driven in eight runs over his last 10 games. And first offering is fouled off. At the belt and fires. In the air, fairly deep to right field. Nice grab, McCutcheon able to make that play. And that ends the inning. No runs on no hits, no errors, and one left on. Top of the order due up in the home half of the sixth. It's the Mets seven and the Pirates nothing. Back here in Pittsburgh, where we go bottom six. Here's the third baseman, Key Brian Hayes. And the right hater back to work. Check swing, went around. 1 1.
and that one is inside. Up the middle. He dives, but can't hang on. That's a base hit. Now back, the designated hitter, Connor Joe. To the plate now for Pittsburgh is the DH. Connor Joe to the right side, and it finds its way through for a hit. Throw back in quickly. First and second now with nobody out. Back-to-back -back singles. No not much to this Number one 10. other than just a willingness to go oh, the other yeah. way and put the ball in play. That's a team at bat right there. Nice job of staying back and letting the ball get deep. Could be a chance here for them to start clawing back into this ball game. And here is Ryan Reynolds. Swings and pulls it foul to the right side. The pitch. And a foul ball, third base side. Next offering is down low. Bounce to the left side, and it goes just foul. Kicks and deals. That's ball two. No outs, runners at first and second. Hacks and misses, it's a strikeout. Way out in front of that inside pitch there, and just exactly the opposite kind of approach that you want with two strikes. You want to let the ball travel, make sure you recognize it, try to shorten up so that you can at least put the ball in play. Clearly fooled, but I think even more so, you question the two strike approach. Cruz in the box again, takes a strike. This guy absolutely flies. The defense wants to turn two, but they've got to get a ball they can do it with. Make sure you get the first out before you try to rush and get two and end up with nothing. And it really looks like these hitters have been in between with their timing today. Good fastball, excellent slider, but they've not been able to commit to one velocity and stay there. This one in the air right field. And that's a base hit. The throw to third. He's in there. Really nice job of two-strike hitting in that at bat. When you pop a ball up like that, you don't expect it to get you a knock too often. But right there, somehow he got it to drop in behind first base, and that's where no one could get to it. Now it's going to be Jack Sawinski. And that one wrapped foul. I always remember watching Johan Santana pitch, and when he was in his prime, you would see... A lot of guys out in front, right-handers pulling that change up in the stands and then fouling the fastball, the opposite field, up into the stands. Typically, that high fastball, if it's no, close to the top teams. of the strike zone, a hitter, if he's prepared for it, can get to it. But that one just had that little jump at the end, which indicates there's a good spin rate on it, and it didn't decrease in velocity as that hitter's internal clock would expect it to, and that's why you see the swing and miss. That's in there. Strike one. He swings and fouls one off. And a pitch. Checks a swing. Appeal to third. Nope, he held back. Hayes on third. Joe at second. Cruz at first. Two out of the inning. Pitch misses inside, and that's ball two. And a swing and a miss, and that's that. I think the key is arm action on the changeup. When you can sell it like a fastball, you drop the velocity, you get the swing and miss, and you walk off the field. Welcome back. We're in the seventh. We have a new pitcher on the mound, Chase DeYoung. He pitched yesterday, and we'll see him once again. Number 37, Chase DeYoung. And stepping in for New York, Mark Canna. Mark Canna.
The pitch. Ball one, no strikes. Activity in Pittsburgh's bullpen. Juan Minaya appears to be getting loose. Line drive. Reynolds makes the grab, and there's one away. Now that designated hitter, Daniel Vogelback. Daniel Vogelback at the plate. And first offering is fouled off. Righty to the plate. That's through there for a strike. Look out! And it hit him! He had two strikes on him, and he hit him. Well, the bright side is that that will help the on-base percentage a little bit, and that's a category no batter can ignore these days. OBP, OPS, well, maybe that'll ease the pain just a little bit. Narvaez at the plate now. That's ball one. If you're the pitcher, you've got to go right at this guy. It's the number nine hitter in the lineup. You can't be afraid of contact in this situation. Swing and a miss, and a count one and one. Nice. And that's a strike. One ball, two strikes. That one in the dirt, two balls, two strikes. And here it comes. On a line, base hit. They fired in quickly, so it's first and second with only one away. Everything came together perfectly for him right there. Got a fastball, middle of the plate, jumped all over it. Absolutely smoked that ball. Brandon Nimmo up now for the Mets. And fouled off. Next offering is down low. And the count is one and one. And that one fouled off. The pitch. Nope. Spoils that one and it remains two and two. One out, runners at first and second. In the air, left side. Sawinski sizes this one up. And he makes the grab. And there are two outs. The right fielder, number six. Starling. Marte. So digging in, Starling Marte. And 
and that is cut on and miss and that's strike one. The pitch hit on the ground to the right side. They get the force and that'll do it. Two left for the Mets and they hold a seven nothing lead. We're back in a new pitcher here to start the bottom of the seventh. John Curtis. And he's got a nice lead to work with, so he should come in throwing strikes, attacking these hitters. And now the right fielder, Andrew McCutcheon. The right fielder, Andrew McCutcheon. The pitch. Liner to second and picked on the hop. McNeil gets it to first. And the leadoff hitter set down to open the seven. Now, and here's the catcher, Henry Davis. Here's a strike. And yeah, that's a little bit high. And the righty deals. And a count one and two. Righty delivers. Got him. That's out number two. No, that's not the best two-strike fastball I've seen, but certainly got away with the location there. You know, sometimes as a hitter, when you're down in the count, you're so focused on a pitcher painting the black, and you just get a little bit locked up on something down the heart of the plate, not expecting it, and it just kind of freezes you. He steps on the bag, and it's a 1-2-3 inning. This one pretty well decided at this point. We look ahead to inning number eight. It's the Mets seven, and the Pirates nothing. Back here at the ballpark, we go to the eighth. Here's the second baseman, Jeff McNeil. McNeil. Here comes a pitch. Inside just missed. That's off the mark. Two balls, no strikes. When you get ahead in the count, there's no doubt that the success rate goes up. And that's what he's been doing. It's made a big impact for him in recent games. Two and old account. Here it comes. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. Here's a high chopper. Throw on to Santana, and that's one away as the leadoff man is out in the eighth. Pete Alonzo up now for the Mets. Swing and a miss. And it's 0 1. Late with the swing there. It normally does damage on that pitch in that location. Just a swing and a miss there. I don't think you want to throw it again, though. Next offering misses. Now one and two. That's a really good job of laying off the 0-2 high fastball. Is going to make that pitcher really have to respect this hitter, even though he's behind in the count. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Next offering is downstairs. Two balls, two strikes. Mm -hmm. 
And now the count filled up three and two. Goes down swinging for the strikeout. He swung over top of the curveball. This guy will throw any pitch in any count. 3-2. He goes off speed. Gets the out. Here's Francisco Lindor. That's towards center. Reynolds gets under it. And he makes the catch. And that is that. The Your Mets with a new please. arm on the mound. Tyler McGill. And you know, bullpen guys can struggle sometimes when they're Tyler called upon with big leads McGill. because it just doesn't have the same intensity as a tight game. So we'll see how sharp he is. Your mental toughness matters in situations like this as well. Key Brian Hayes digs in now. The pitch. That one misses. Ball one. High in the air, out to right. Marte makes the grab, one down. The batter, number two, designated hitter. Up next for the Pirates, Connor Joe. Swing and he breaks his bat. And a foul ball. Oh, that's a foul ball. And a pitch. There's a strike. Oh and two. Gets a piece and it stays 0 and 2. And a pitch. That misses off the, off the outside one. edge. Swing and a ball lifted left field. Canna going back on this one. Grabs it on the run. Out number two. The center fielder, number 10, Brian. So next to the plate for Pittsburgh, Brian Reynolds. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Well, and at bat can be a little bit of a dance. Strike one here, but a few more pitches. We'll see how it turns out. Hard hit, right side. Gets it to first, and they take care of Reynolds for the out. And that is that. So anyway, I got the powder like an avalanche. You know my heat stays hotter than a cattle brand. I want it all. I'm back in the saddle again. It's like the wild, wild west. Cowboys and Indians, yeah. Juan Minaya comes on now. And with the big deficit on the scoreboard, he almost has to just put that out of his mind. Every outing matters for relievers and their numbers, but I think it's tough to get up for this type of appearance the same way you would for one in a close game. So digging in, Brett Beatty. Minaya, in his fourth year, 32 years old, and he was born in the Dominican Republic. And he flips a breaking ball in there, or a changeup. Either one, <laughs> something off speed. Good arm action on it, whatever it was. And he pumps it a strike. Where do you even begin with the talent we've seen from the Dominican Republic? Vladi, Big Poppy, Pedro, the list goes on and on. That misses the zone. It's a ball and two strikes. Cuts on it and misses. That's a strikeout. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Here's the left fielder, Mark Canna. The left fielder, Mark Canna. That one's in there, 0 and 1. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. The 0-2. And a foul ball, he stays alive. 
He's mixing his pitches really well late on that fastball after seeing the changeup. See if he can elevate one. I think if he does, he'll get the swing and miss. Oh, Next pitch is outside. Yeah, the one two misses to even the count. And it's filled up. That's hard hit on the line. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there's two away. Daniel Vogelback. Daniel Vogelback up now for the Mets. In the air, left field. Sawinski makes the catch, and that'll do it. Three up, three down that time. On to the bottom of inning number nine. Four, five, six, coming up. It's the Mets seven, and the Pirates nothing. All set for the bottom of the ninth. At the plate for Pittsburgh, O'Neill Cruz. McGill back to work. There's a strike. Next pitch is inside. One and two to count. Chopped out in front of the plate. To first. One out, bottom of the ninth. Now batting left fielder. Jack Sawinski, the next pirate to hit. Great speed and great power. A great athlete, quite simply. First Whoa, offering, right and now. it just misses. Hey, he's like Mike Trout. You figure whatever you put in his hand, whether it's a bat, whether it's a golf club, whether it's a basketball, he can do it and get it done. And a rare talent, so much fun to watch. Kicks and fires. So a foul ball makes it one and two. And the pitch. Gets a piece and stays alive. Knocks that one away and we'll do it again. Here's a one two. Got it by him for the K. And there's another strikeout, and those are just continuing to pile up. His confidence level has got to be dropping. He's got to find a way to make an adjustment, but get back on track. His team needs him. Castro stands in now and watches strike one. Next pitch misses. Ball one. And now one strike away. And a swing and a miss, and that is the ball game. Well, the fourth inning proved to be the real turning point. They looked locked in at the plate after that first time through the order where it just seemed that they were off balance a little bit. But once they started really recognizing the pitches, everything started to click. This one ends 7-0. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Chomby saying so long. The final line score for this afternoon's ballgame for the victorious New York Mets.
seven runs on ten hits. No errors. They left ten men on base. For the Pirates, no runs. Six hits.